In today's session, we'll be discussing an important topic, a very common symptom most of us would encounter in our day to day practice that is headache. So, the session today we will be discussing about headache. The learning objectives of this session, at the end of the session the student must be able to list the common types of headache, what are primary headaches, what are secondary headaches, discuss the clinical features and the types of possibly the most common headaches that we get that is migraine, list the differential diagnosis of migraine and how do we differentiate each other and also to discuss the management of migraine. Let us begin this session with the case scenarios. So, the first case here we have is a 31 year old man. He comes with history of severe headaches which he says has caused him worst pain he ever felt. When he gets these headaches, he says there is one side of the head is paining around the eye along with the side of his face. He also experiences drooping or swelling of the eyelid, watering of eyes and nasal congestion on the same side of headache. So, here we have this case scenario. So, you have a young male here who comes with this headache which is unilateral associated very important features it is around the eyes, there is swelling of eyelids, there is watering and nasal congestion that is there. So, some sort of a autonomic features are there that are there in seeing these patients that you see. So, what is this type of headache? So, this is one common example that we have. So, he has experienced severe headache for the first time two weeks ago and he has undergone a CT scan which is normal. So, this rules out the major worrying causes of an acute onset of headache, maybe an intracranial lesion, all those things have been ruled out. So, what is this type of headache? That is one type that we can discuss. Coming on to the next case scenario, we have a young girl, 14 year old girl who comes to your clinic. She says that she has two months history of headache which is of banging nature and which makes her head feel very sore. She feels that there is very severe pain that she feels. She says that in the past 6 months she has had almost 6 times these headaches and she also says even the light hurts her. So, the light which is coming hurts her and it triggers the headache. She feels nauseous sometimes and vomits during the headache. So, here we have 2 case scenarios that we saw. So, we have the first case scenario where a young male who was there who had unilateral headache with associated eye symptoms, there was redness of the eyes, there was tearing that was there. And then we had a young girl who had this episodic headaches which was very severe and she says it is banging in character and she has multiple episodes. There is no other symptoms other than that. Light is precipitating. So, she has a precipitating factor of light as well as she says that she has nausea and vomiting. So, these are the common examples that we see. So, in the first case scenario where you have a young male who had associated symptoms related to the eye, it could be a possible cluster headache that could be there. In the second case scenario, the most common cause which is seen in young females, episodic headache associated with aura, associated with the uh, nausea and vomiting possibly episodes would suggest of migraine. So, we have these common scenarios that you would encounter. So, we will have to clinically differentiate each type of headache. We will have to see which type of headache, which phenotype does it belong to and based on that we will have to decide on our management. Most important, we have to rule out the dangerous diseases which can produce headache. It could be an intracranial space occupying lesion, it could be a subdural hematoma, it could be a bleed inside. Also, we have to be very much aware that there are systemic causes which can produce headache. So, all these things we will be discussing in today's session. So, today's session we have when a patient comes with headache, the dilemma that we have is what is the cause for this headache? Is it migraine? So, migraine by far the most common cause of primary headaches. You could have tension headaches that could be there. You could have cluster headache. You have upper respiratory sinus infections that can produce headache. So, various causes of headache. So, to diagnose something as migraine, we have to differentiate it from the other common types of headaches. So, 99% of women and 93% of men have headaches during their lifetime. So, it is almost everybody suffers from headache. By far the most common presenting symptom to any OPD is headache is common. 25% of women and 8% of men in the United States have migraine. So, it is a very common disease if you see. 18% of women or 6% of men have had migraine in the past. So, if you put the total percentage almost 30% of a young population would be suffering from migraine at any given time. 
the prevalence is very high between the age of 25 to 55 years. So it's a young age group and you get these headaches that would be there in migraine. Headache is the presenting symptom of 2.5% of emergency visits. So in the emergency room, the patients can come with headache and one of the top 10 most complaints which is encountered by any specialist is headache. Most of the headaches do not represent any serious medical condition. Usually they are uh, either a minor disease or a migraine or something like that which does not require uh, an emergency therapy possibly. They have to be given medications but they are not life threatening diseases. One of the long list of differential diagnosis in medicine. Again very importantly when we see the causes of headache you have an entire list of diseases which can come. So the differential diagnosis for a headache is a real long list of diseases. The classification of headache the first uh, approved classification came back in 2004 the International Headache Society classification where they classified the headache into two categories primary or secondary. So primary headache is the one which is as headache is associated with features are there is no other disorder itself. So it's only headache and headache only there is no other disorder that is there. Secondary is where the headache is due to a exogenous disorder. So exogenous disorder. So this is the basic classification. This classification system holds good it has been updated, many new diseases have been added into it but then the basic classification still remains the same whether it is a primary headache or a secondary headache. Now coming on to the primary headache, the most common type of primary headache please remember is something what we call it as the tension type of headache which accounts for almost 69% of patients, 69% of the primary headaches is tension type headache. Migraine followed is the second most common disorder, 16% of the primary headaches. Cluster headache accounts for 0.1%. Then you could have other neurological diseases which could present with headache and they could be a primary headache, there is no other. Could be a neuralgias, could be glossopharyngeal, trigeminal neuralgias, etc. which can come primarily with headache only as a symptom. The secondary type of headache, the most common etiology for that is systemic infection would come to around 63% of the entire list of secondary headache is secondary to infection. So just the fever itself can precipitate headache, you get something called as a toxic headache just because of the various inflammatory cytokines that are released during infection that itself causes headache. Head injury is the second most common cause of headache, vascular diseases could be stroke or related diseases, subarachnoid hemorrhage these are some of the important causes which come under the secondary headache. Coming on to the life threatening causes of acute headache which can cause lethal or mortality is basically the intracranial hemorrhage be it subdural or subarachnoid hemorrhage. These are two important hemorrhages where you do have life threatening the patients can succumb within the first 48 hours. Second important disease you have to remember is meningitis. Now if it is not diagnosed appropriately, appropriate treatment has not been started immediately you can lose the patient. There could be mortality or else there could be sequelae the patient can have permanent neurological deficit. The other important life threatening is hypertensive encephalopathy. When the blood pressure possibly is more than 160, 180 or 200 and the patient has papilledema and altered sensorium, seizures, that is a very important cause. So these are important causes which can cause deaths acutely. Please remember there could be tumors which can cause or a space occupying lesions. They do not cause acute headaches, they got a subacute concept. The patients can die due to that also but when we say life threatening causes of acute headache it is basically this bleeding, the hypertensive encephalopathy as well as meningitis. These three important medical conditions that we have to always remember and we have to rule it out. Before we go on to a discussion on the types of headache let us just briefly describe the anatomy and the physiology why the pain occurs whenever there is a headache, why does the pain occur. So what are the pain sensitive structures that are present? So you have the skin and its blood supply, it's highly nerves are there so you can get pain there. The muscles of the head and neck, so if the muscles get inflamed you can get there, the in the neck or the facial muscles etc can get. The great veins, the sinuses, sagittal sinus thrombosis, cavernous sinus thrombosis, you could get a severe headache that could be there. Portions of the meninges including the dura mater at the base of the skull. So at the base of the skull, the dura mater, supposedly you have a basal meningitis, BB tuberculosis or something like that, you could get that. 
The dural arteries and the intracerebral arteries are all pain sensitive structures. The cervical nerves, you can have select cranial nerves, not all cranial nerves are pain sensitive, select cranial nerves are the ones which are the pain sensitive. Cervical nerves, all of them are pain sensitive. So, the largest intracranial vessels and dura mater, these are the primary structures which are importantly involved with presentation of a primary headache. So, the vessels that are predominantly, earlier it was said as the dura as such or the nervous system. Now, what is believed is the vessels are the primary site why the patient would get these headaches predominantly. The peripheral terminals of the trigeminal nerve, very important, almost all the headaches which you would say in the primary category would finally come into the trigeminothalamic nerve system that could be there and that is the one which supplies various parts of the face. So, that is where you can get this uh, headache from. The trigeminocervical complex, this is what we discuss here. So, the trigeminocervical complex is the caudal portion of the trigeminal nerve which extends into the dorsal horn of the upper cervical spinal cord and receives input from the first and second cervical nerve roots. Now, this is the main structure which has been studied, what we call it as a trigeminocervical complex. That is where the inputs come and then it travels up uh, through the uh, quintothalamic tract and that is where it is pursued possibly finally in the thalamus. The pain sensitive structure are affected by either tension, traction, distension, dilatation and inflammation. So, anything that could happen, either there is a tension on that or there is a traction on that, distension, dilatation or inflammation of any of the pain sensitive structures that we have listed can result in pain. The pain modulatory is basically through the trigeminal nociceptor. So, trigeminal nerve and its uh, branches and the effects that could come through it has been widely studied and that is where the entire pain mechanisms of all the primary headaches are related primarily to trigeminal nociceptor. Mm -hmm.